Hello, I'm Graham Keating and this is Morning of Ardwell, our Vancouver 38 pilot. While she's out of the water for the winter, we've got a few projects on, and one of which is to try and find a way of keeping our diesel clean. We spent nearly five years in the Pacific and we were buying diesel from some fairly small roadside garages and so on. So we were using jerry cans and our routine would be to buy the diesel, leave it to stand for a day, have a good look inside and then use a, uh, a siphon tube which only went to about an inch above the bottom of the tank. So any crud that was in the bottom wouldn't get sucked up into the uh, main tank when we transferred it. And it was surprising how much crud we did find. But now here back in the UK, even with supposedly clean diesel, there's an increasing risk of microbial growth within diesel. It's called diesel bug, and it's where water and diesel mix. Um, and it's not helped by the fact that now diesel has a degree of biofuel added to it, and that's increasing the issue. So we've decided to try and find a way of cleaning our diesel on a regular basis to remove the risk of diesel bug clogging our engine's filters. Morney's fuel tank is mounted below the floor, so there's only access from the very top section here. But there is a small access port here, and this allows us to use a copper tube to dip down right to the very base of the tank. And that's going to be the basis of the fuel polishing system that we're putting together. The concept of the fuel polisher is to have a constant flow from the bottom of the tank through the filter and water separator and back to the top of the tank. I'd originally thought to actually put this in a hardwired effectively into the in-feed and out-feed lines for the engine but that looked fairly complicated and I changed plans and decided to make this a completely portable unit. I think this gives us probably three key advantages. First of all, it allows me to clean the tanks. Uh, we have two on board. Secondly, it allows us to transfer and clean fuel from jerry cans without all that messing around with siphon tubes. And finally, it'll be a lot easier to fit. Well, the big box of components from ASAP Supplies has arrived. Time to unpack it and see if I've got all the right bits. The heart of this system is a Raycor 500 filter. It uses turbine technology to spin out any water and debris to be collected in the polycarbonate bowl. Then there's a second 10 micron filter to remove any remaining water droplets and debris. A facet 12 volt pump will do all the hard work. And of course there are a whole bunch of connectors barbs and valves for the pipework. So that's the mechanical connections completed. Uh, the red stuff, by the way, is Loctite 577. It's a medium strength thread locker to help stop any leaks of diesel. Uh, but I have used copper washers where I can on these uh, valves as well. So mechanical bits done ready to set together, uh, but I now need a 12 volt power supply for the pump. It only draws about one and a half to two amps, so it doesn't need a big a set of cables. And I already have on the boat uh, an old bit of cable with a 12 volt uh, power supply uh, plug. Um, so in theory, I could just use that un unswitched and just plug it straight in, uh, but I am an engineer, so I wanted a slightly more uh, tidy solution. So within the system, I'm gonna have a control box, a 12 volt switch, and uh, going slightly over the top here, perhaps a, a digital hour counter. And the idea of this is it'll allow me to run the fuel polishing system, keep an eye on how long it's been running. The pump takes uh, capacity is about 120 liters an hour. So I'll know roughly how many liters I've pumped through the system. And it also gives me a running total on how long the filter in this Raycor uh, will last. So next job is to drill this, fit it, and then I need to mount it all on a board and put it into a case. Well, now the cat's got out of the way, you get a better idea of what we're doing. So this dimension here is the size of the case that this is gonna go into. 
at least I think it is. Unfortunately, I bought the secondhand one on eBay and it seems at the moment that the courier has lost it. So I'm not gonna cut the board and mount all this until I know I've actually got the right case. But broadly speaking, the concept is pretty clear now. So we've got in feed here, we're gonna put some copper tube in here about a meter length and that'll dip into the bottom of the fuel tank through the filter. It then sucks through the pump. Uh, that's the most efficient way to have the pump on the suction side. And then the out feed goes through another pipe, another bit of copper tube back into the tank. So um, that'll all get mounted, of course. We've got our control box with switch and the counter. That'll need to be wired up. But kind of until I get the correct box to put it all in, uh, I probably can't go much further. But that gives you an idea of where we're up to so far. Well, the bad news is that the courier did in fact lose the case, but the good news is uh, the vendor managed to claim off them and gave me my money back. And I found a company um, selling these uh, Chinese made uh, waterproof cases, uh, 50 pounds, including postage. So uh, it's slightly bigger than I wanted, but actually it's made it easy to fit. So what we have with the case is everything mounted on a backboard uh, and ready to go. So I'm very pleased it all runs and there were no leaks, which is great, but um, we really need to test it. And I'm gonna do something I've never done before, which is to uh, pour some water into my diesel. I've added a bit of color uh, to it, a bit of dye, just to uh, see what it does. Well, as you saw in the slow-mo, the uh, turbine system just sort of spun the water out and dropped it straight to the bottom of the bowl. So it only took about maybe 15 seconds. And there's the line. This is the water at the bottom and there's the diesel above. So all we have to do now is open the drain cock and drain it out. So I am super impressed with that, really pleased. Uh, I was able to hoover up everything from the bottom of the tank. I uh, could see no black uh, water left in there at all. Um, and it's done what I wanted it to do. Uh, so I think what we've done is got something that's really going to be uh, a good addition to the boat. I can't wait get to get down to the boat to hoover out the bottom of the tanks and see what muck we find in them. But of course it didn't come cheap. This bit of kit, um, well, the, the Raycor itself, about 230 pounds. Uh, the pump, about just under 70. Uh, so with all the sort of uh, hardware, there's about 340, 350 pounds worth of equipment there. I use a company called ASAP Supplies. They actually give me a 5% discount because I'm a member of the Cruising Association. The electrics, uh, about 20 pounds from RS Components. Bits and pieces, and obviously my time. So around about 400 pounds, including the 50 pound case. Um, but, this year we had our engine falter and die because its main filter blocked as we were motoring down the Irish Sea, thankfully in very calm weather, but I had to change the primary filter at sea, which isn't a lot of fun. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be a case of giving me confidence that I start the, uh, any, any trip with really clean diesel in the tanks. <laughs> 